this is Red Band coming to you live from the Comedy Store for a brand new episode of Kill Tony Volume 2. Give it up for Tony Hinchcliffe. Fuck yeah, everybody. How you guys doing? Hello. Hi, everyone. Good to be here. Happy Monday to you. Episode 36 of Kill Tony. I'm here with... Uh, Good friend Brian. How you guys doing tonight, everybody? Yeah. Always fun. Down? What? What are you saying? Yeah, um, that's what we're talking about. This sound system here changes every single week. It's fucking annoying as hell. Yeah, it's a. Uh, they they probably do about uh, probably about twenty or twenty five different shows out of this room a week. So I can't imagine how many crazy hands get on all the dials and everything on different things. Yeah, that's twenty different people that. Does not ha know how to right, use that. Right, they have no idea. Yeah. Oh, it's totally always just a comedian working that big box back there to try to get a spot on whatever show it is. Right. <laughs> it's in the place just has been... So imagine that. I mean, that's every week, 20 different hands, times 52 weeks, times 40 fucking years this room has been Yeah, they keep on blowing speakers and replacing them with, like, 80s boom boxes or whatever these... I, I think these, these are iHomes, old iHomes that they're using <laughs> here. But Fuck yeah, though. We're getting it all figured out. Yeah. You're the master of disaster with that shit. It's a heavy chord tonight. Yeah, see? The chords are that. changing in girth. Wow, hello? Check? Okay. Um, yeah, it's been a crazy week since the last episode. The last episode, I'm pretty sure, was definitely, undisputedly, our most buzzworthy episode. People are saying that's the best episode we had, and we were very nervous uh, for last episode being the first of volume two. Mm-hmm. We yeah. hit uh, number one on Stitcher in some category at some point. That's cool. That's a first every... Oh, no applause on that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for your support. I mean, number one's not that big of a deal, uh, but, uh, I mean, uh, you know, there's other numbers, so who cares, right? <laughs> who cares about being number one? Uh, why, would, why would you work towards that goal? Um, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, and just the fucking tweets, the everything, it's the, the outreach and support of the show has been unbelievably awesome it's great like I, I i don't think i think i only heard a few negative comments and the negative comments were all like hey us people that like to fuck dogs are very disappointed in death squad right <laughs> yeah and i'm telling you man it's amazing because you know the podcast world is one thing but there's also this crazy hollywood land thing that i that i like to delve into during the day with like auditions and you know there's just everything it's show business that we're in and there's an amazing amount of buzz there too which really surprises me for a, a raw renegade type of podcast that takes place in the belly room of the store like it's so funny to hear people talking about listening to the episodes and this and that like pretty high up people so we're rattling the cages uh so it's very fun it's really exciting. And uh, to think that we did it after getting stabbed in the back, that that's what it took. Yeah. The, the betrayal yeah. is what it took to push us to number one. Uh, so, you know, it's just, it, I mean, to push us to the best that we've ever been. So that's an exciting thing. And, uh, you know, last week it was fun. We tested out the Iron Josh. Yep, Iron Josh. And, uh, Maybe maybe we'll give him another chance, but in the meanwhile, we're gonna. I think we should keep, uh, you know, testing out different types. That's right. See what we got uh, tonight is something very special. Uh, this iron dude is uh, pretty well known in the Death Squad community. Very well known. Been in many episodes of Death Squad, especially Ice House Chronicles, mm -hmm. uh, and you've, he's been a friend of the show for a long time. He's been there since the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just bring him up, huh? Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, our head of security tonight, put your hands together for Iron, iron PDC. <laughs> <laughs> wow, look at this. Upgraded as... Wow. <laughs> wow. Stronger than ever. This is great. Uh, as we could tell, there's been some upgrades. Uh, no longer does he have the iron penis snake. Uh, he has a advanced wireless mic system coming out of his crotch. Yep, oh, you yes, could tell. Uh, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, that's a hot mic. It is a hot mic. Heck yeah, some uh, IKEA lights on your palms. That's yep, pretty that's, cool. That's right, too. You might have seen these at the checkout stand. 
What, wait, what was that? They sell these at the checkout. Oh, I got gotcha. you. You know, it's an impulse buy. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it, uh, impulse, uh, no. Yeah. Hell yeah. You got to really you gotta, you get gotta, that you crotch gotta stay mic in, in there. Stay in one spot, Patriot. Or I mean PDC. Patriot. Patriot. Is it the Patriot or the PD, Iron PDC? What do you think? Well, uh, I, I particularly like the Patriot. Patriot it is. Patriot. <laughs> <laughs> His name's Pete. Turn the patent to the Pete. It's the Patriot. Um, so, fuck yeah. So what's been going on, Patriot? What's going on? What, what's, what's your world like? Uh, tough day on the boulevard today. Yeah? <laughs> got, got into a fight with one of the Superman guys. Oh. Yeah, trying to get in my pictures and get dollars from kids. It's bullshit. Exactly. Uh, now, you are you had a band too, right? What's, uh, what's that called? I did. It's uh, called Filthy Lobster. <laughs> Filthy Lobster. Yeah. I had a hit song, uh, Share My Papaya. Wow. Share your papaya. Yeah, share my papaya. Oh, wow. <laughs> Heck yeah. It's oh, really weird because <laughs> like him looking over at me really <laughs> seems like we're looking at the the original Iron Patriot. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty nice suit you bought here. Yeah, it's uh it's slowly getting there. It's like uh it's like if the Iron Patriot uh, this is what the Iron Patriot looked like on Halloween when he was six years old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or it looks like the Iron pa- Iron Patriot's like on a slumber party. Yeah. <laughs> He's in his little his little jammies, <laughs> a little sleepover. <laughs> <laughs> when all else fails, just make those noises. Um, I've watched the tapes. Hell yeah, <laughs> you've done your research. That's great. Well, uh, I'm glad to have you here, Pete. Uh, what do you say uh, we get this thing started, huh? Uh, uh, Tony. Yeah. Tony, oh, uh, oh, yes. Wait a second. Well, what is it? What is it, Pete? Uh, I have to use the restroom. Can I? Oh. Can I go use the restroom? Oh well, absolutely. But uh, in the meanwhile, to stand in for you uh, while you use the restroom. Um, we are going to bring up the Iron Gatriot, everybody! Our first ever! Our first ever homosexual head of security! Wow! It's Iron Justin Martindale, aka the Iron Gatriot. Okay, how you doing? How you doing today, buddy? I'm, you know, furious. <laughs> wow, this is amazing. Yeah, I have nothing better to do on a Monday, so, you know. Right, you know, exactly. Have, you know. Exactly. I'm glad that uh, you were able to be our backup head of security <laughs> today. <laughs> a, lo- a lot of people uh, weren't able to do that. I had to call. This is a uh, podcasting kryptonite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really hard to put. I'm sure, that, I'm sure uh, he's used to touching tips also. It's not a really hard thing. You just you put got it, it yeah. right there. Just Wait, hold on. I had a... Last time you had this trouble with a mic, it was a guy actually named Mike. Yeah. I don't know what okay, he's doing. Uh, he's just turning it on and off now at this point. It should just stay on. Oh. <laughs> he's doing some sound effects for us. I got to hold on to this, Jeff said. What was that? A number 32? Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right, I got it. I'm sorry. So, Gatriot, uh, what's going on? Uh, anything, uh, any, any, anything going on? Uh, I fell out of a hot tub this weekend. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and then they, uh, the people, I was in a group of people in a hot tub, as one should when they look like this, and um, <laughs> and then fell out of the hot tub trying to get a drink, and they were like, oh, we forgot to tell you the um, floors were made of marble, and yeah. So I got to eat shit in front of a bunch of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Tony, the Iron uh, Gatriot brought, uh, sent me a song this what? week. What? I heard yeah. you guys liked music, so. <laughs> wow. It's yeah. been a couple weeks since we've had a song from our head of security. I'm pretty excited about this. Ladies and gentlemen, here you go. The Iron Gatriot, everyone. <laughs> Whoa. What's this going to be? It sounds scary. When will they go from here? When will they stop? When I believe that fate has brought us here, and we should be together, babe. But we're not. <laughs> not playing a fact, I'm dreaming of your hair. And I keep my cool, but I'm feeling I try to say goodbye and I check Try to walk away and I stand this shit Though I try to hide it 
Guys, give it up to wow. the Iron Gate Triad. Wow. Heck yeah. That was, that was that awesome. Was awesome. Oh, Heck yeah. There he goes, the Iron Gate Triad. Uh, that was amazing. Justin Martindale, everybody. Justin Heck yeah. Martindale. Unbelievable performance. Thank you so much. Pretty good. Everything come out okay, Iron Patriot? Yeah, we're, we're just fine. Fantastic. Hey, uh, uh, I don't know if you guys know this little bit of uh, factoid for you, but uh, <laughs> this is the first episode of Kill Tony that's ever taken place during Black History Month. So, Oh. Yeah, I got a lot of tweets from my uh, female N-words about that today. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you guys... Oh, wow. Wow. Very you, good. You may have seen me retweet them. Wow, you call wow. girls Nancys. I don't. I, <laughs> that's that's yeah. very old-fashioned of you. Very, yeah. Nancy. Uh, real quick before we jump into it, uh, we are at the La Jolla. Kill Tony comes to the La Jolla Comedy Store on the road for the first time ever on March 1st. So San Diego, if you're listening to this, it's going to be March 1st, and tickets will be available online uh, probably by the time you hear this. Uh, so it's going to be very soon. It'll, it's going to be March 1st at the La Jolla Comedy Store, the first ever Kill Tony on the road. So very exciting. Um, also, <laughs> that's it. This is Tom Segura's uh, T-shirt. That's available at TomSegura.com, I yep, believe. Yep, TomSegura.com. Special birthday shout-out to Marie. Yeah. Water boxers in the house, everybody. Guys, get up. My favorite person. He's a fan of me, but I'm a fan of him. Um, I retweet him all the time. Very good. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, so let's get it started. Are you guys ready? Kill Tony 36, motherfuckers. And just as always, it's super duper special. In no particular order, your two guests go like this. Uh, truly one of the first people to ever take me on the road with them or work with me. Uh, one of my favorite people, one of the funniest people here at the Comedy Store. It's Steve Trevino, everybody. And also, coming with him. From the Big Lebowski, from Seinfeld, another one of the best comedians in the fucking world, Don Iver, everybody. Boom! Wow. Thank you. Thank you, nice people. Don Irera, welcome. Steve Trevino, good to have you. Tony. Heck yes. Too long. I know. It's always too long. Actually, it's just been a couple days. I did your podcast the other day. Seems like a long time to me, Tony. Because <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> hey, guys. That was really gay. Uh, <laughs> the, the gay triad? Right, yeah. yeah. I In can't fact, be gay. <laughs> that, what? I can't be gay even if I wanted to. I couldn't get in that kind of shape. I go to the gay gym hoping to get raped. <laughs> that way, at least I know I have a nice body. You know what I mean? Yeah. There yeah. you go. I tried. See, it thing's not on. Does it's on. Is this weird belly room is being crazy right now? Yeah. Yeah. Can like you guys hear us? It's only oh, in room. Worse. Yeah. 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 All right. Cool. Super clearly. No, we hear you. We just don't like it. We just don't fuck. Right. Do you guys want a drink? Josh is gonna make a run right now. You guys you want anything? You uh, Josh, I'll have a beer, bud. Can you get me a beer? What do you Thank want, you, Dom? Sir? Can I get a Jameson? Neat. Put your hands together for my fucking guests. We're going to have fun tonight, guys. These two guys know comedy big time. Patriot, what, you got any questions for our guests? Uh, I was doing a little research the afternoon. <laughs> and uh, uh, Steve, you started comedy in Texas, right? Yep, Texas. Then uh, you came to Hollywood. Yes. You got a writing gig and uh, opened up for Carlos Mencia, right? Oh, whoa, 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 let's keep that to yourself. <laughs> uh, I'm still trying to shake off the stink, buddy. <laughs> well, I uh, I heard you on Mark Maron's podcast. Yeah, uh, I did. Uh, talking did. about uh, uh, Carlos stealing jokes from you. Uh, has he contacted you since then? No, I haven't. I haven't. He doesn't talk to me much anymore. Uh, he doesn't talk to anybody fucking much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I just like the way that the questions are coming from your dick. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's where the uh, voice box <laughs> comes from. <laughs> so then, yeah, that's it. It's a good question, Patriot. How about uh, how about anything for Dom? Uh, Dom. Um, You've been in uh, The Big Lebowski, Seinfeld, Golden Girls, uh, Everyone Loves Raymond, The Late Show, Tonight Show, Conan. Uh, so my question for you is, uh, what's your favorite breakfast cereal? <laughs> it's a little Say it's Mr. T, please. <laughs> Special K. 
You know, I, I actually stole material from Carlos Mencia. <laughs> <laughs> no, nobody would believe him. <laughs> Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> We just jinxed on that one. That's that's a, that's a that's a great move. Um, so you guys know how the show goes. Uh, I'm so happy that you guys made time to uh, come on this because I trust your opinions up there with. I mean, absolutely fucking anybody. Tony, um, thanks for inviting us because my Monday nights are jammed. <laughs> 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 I slipped you into my schedule because I love you. <laughs> you are the best. Um, yeah, one of them anyway. <laughs> Even Comedy Central said you're one of the top 50 comics in the world. Top 100. I was number oh. 79. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. I really blew that one. No, no. Let me tell you. It, I, I'm not bitter, but fucking Cedric the Entertainer was 78. <laughs> and how can I compete with an entertainer? I mean, all I am is a stand-up. He entertains. He has people over. He has a nice spread. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, a solid man. point. That is a solid Thank point. You. That yeah. is great. I was so voted top 10 of uh, comics in uh, Gregory Portland, Texas. Oh, oh. that's, that's, that's a very a, important was, list. Yeah, I was number I, nine. How big is that zip code? Uh, there's about 2,000 <laughs> 2, people there. People? Yeah. That's pretty good. Uh, my mom was on the committee to vote. <laughs> and that's how I got number nine. Hell yes. Thanks, bud. I like your attitude. Awesome. So you guys know how the show works. As always, uh, over 30 comedians signed up tonight for the opportunity to do one minute of stage time in front of our lovely guests and myself and the show. Um, and uh, we try to help them out or talk to them, find out information about them. They go from comedian to guest on the show as soon as the minute's up. And you know your minute's up when you hear that sound of a kitty. Aw, how adorable. That's when you know you've hit a minute. Now, don't go longer than that, or else she'll be running the light, and you'll bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. Wow. He is extra angry tonight. <laughs> Holy he, shit. He guys. really is furious. So, I mean, thing. we try to teach the people, you know, you got to do your time and get off. So. That's part of being a stand-up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, all those little lessons. Tell and that to Dave Chappelle. <laughs> right. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I'll let you tell him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, with no further ado, what do you guys say we get into it? Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. I have a bucket full of comedians and two of my oh, favorites please with pick me. Dane Cook. Please. <laughs> please. Dane Cook's just stopping by to do a quick 90. <laughs> <laughs> Just a, a tight, a tight 90. Are you correcting me? No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. I was number 79. <laughs> Don't forget it, motherfucker. I won't. Oh, I'm sure you'll remind me a couple more times. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go. Your first comedian goes by the name of Tracy Greenwood. Everyone. Wow. Tracy. Right there in the front. How you doing there? Is this, is this on? That's okay. mistake number one. Is this thing on? That's oh, yeah. fucking hacky. Josh, can you turn on the microphone? There's a button on. Is it? Okay. There we go. Got to talk into it closely. Thanks. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, well, actually, in my daytime uh, job, I was an attorney until I got fired because I was really shitty at it, so I thought I'd try stand-up. But I worked with a guy who used to bring his phone into the bathroom, and, and I didn't like that. So I came up with a public service announcement to tell him that I didn't like him doing that. And it wrote it in the form of a poem. Don't use your phone on the throne. Don't put that image in my dome. You can text, you can sext, you can tweet me some teat, but don't call me from a round porcelain seat. And I think that my concern's legit. I just don't want to hear your shit. So if I hear an echo or a grunt, I'm hanging up and you're a cunt. Some things are just better when you do them alone. Don't use your phone on the throne. Thank you. That's it? Wow, Good. okay. 37 seconds. Uh, that was a lot of poem. It's a, uh, okay. So uh, you don't do stand-up. This is something like you're trying out right now. Exactly. The, is, yes. this, is this your first time on stage? Uh, second time. Wow. Where was your first time at? The Improv Hollywood. Wow. See, they just throw – They just, that, that place just puts anybody up. That's the difference between the comedy <laughs> store and the improv, by the you, way. If you pay for a class, you get to go up at the end. Uh, oh. So. Is all your material, material like, poem-based, or is it, is, do you have oh, jokes? No. Like joke, I have jokes, jokes, yeah. Can I hear a joke? Can I hear it? Sure, I have a joke about being a father. 
There you go. The, Let's the tell it. Great thing about being a father is you don't have to be very good at it. Just be very positive. Set your sights really low and just be very enthusiastic. That's, that so, was more of a statement. Maybe a tweet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a tweet. That could have been a solid, you know, pound, pound, pound characters. inspirational. You know what I mean? Something like yeah. that. Thank you. You know? That's, uh, that's a, that would be great on a calendar of father advice. Yeah. Uh, With a kitten, you know, something like that. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, uh, I'm not a laugher, but I got to tell you, you had me fucking crying. <laughs> I, Thank you very much. Oh, I was, I mean, I have a little bronchitis. I was wheezing. I, and I think Thank Cedric you. the Entertainer did that rhyme on Def Jam in 93. I'm no, pretty sure, and it killed have. murder. I have to bring him up. The That's actually uh, original. Yeah, sorry. The, the Def Jam yeah. where... Uh, you That's w- totally original. Um, are you thinking about doing this for real? Like you want to do this Absolutely, as yes. a career? Good for you. It's hard, it's hard to say anything. It's your second time on stage, so... Right. The only advice I have is fucking keep doing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah maybe make it funny. Right. Yeah, it, probably make it funny. That's some good advice. Two times on yeah. stage, I'll tell you this, just that you nip it in the butt. You want to do poems? That's great. You got to pun... I mean, if you really want to be like a poem type of comedian... It's got to hit hard. You got to raise the stakes. You got to start rhyming with crazier words. You know what I mean? Like okay. you've really got to go for it. Or yeah. and what I'm basically saying is, is if you want to do stand up, I'd Im- immediately don't, lose, lose the poem. Yeah, because okay. you don't want to get. <laughs> That's my first time. To do That's that what he was trying to get so. to. Don't yeah. do the fucking Excuse poem. Me, Jeff Ross is on the phone for you. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Ross wants his poem back. Yeah. That's what I mean, uh, like Di- said that. Dice Clay is a good, Dice Clay is a good example of doing a poem right, even if it is like a nursery rhyme even or even something like that. Even if he stole it from Otto and George, by the way. Did he really? really? Did really? Yeah. Wow. There's a little fact. Actually, it wasn't even his. My inspiration oh, for wow. that was Attila the stockbroker, who was a punk poet in the '80s. Russians running the DHSS. Um, well, if you're going to okay. do that that way, you might want to start off at the poem side because stand-up comedy comics would just start beating you up if you keep on doing <laughs> poems. Right. When you say <laughs> you were inspired by Attila the stockbroker, is that yes. an actual stockbroker or no. is that a comedian? No, he's, he was a punk poet. A he punk was a poet. poet. But not a comedian. Right. No, but he was very funny. I think you're very likable. Actually. Yeah. Thank you. I think you're very likable. I think that you uh, – I like the way you started out with the, with the mic not working. That was funny. <laughs> no, I, I couldn't. <laughs> the tight no, tuck t-shirt, I hilarious. Mean, uh, thank you. Tight tuck, like buddy. <laughs> it works you know with I mean? my body type, this, actually. This, no, it know, doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but it's hard. I mean, it's your second time on stage, guy. The last you person know, to hit me, Patriot, you got to say something. Whoa, 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 who's the fucking host of this show, okay? Yeah. No, it's okay. Actually, no, uh, no, I, I, no, he inspired me. I do want to hear what people... Well, uh, when you said your name was Tracy, I was sure it was going to be a woman. Uh, and you're not, but I do appreciate your breasts. Oh. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> see, the, it, uh, <laughs> see why I let that happen there? Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to wake the Patriot. The, the Patriot yeah. only thinks evil My thoughts, son. so you probably, check in with him. You probably should have just sat down. <laughs> <My son>. yeah. <laughs> First you mistake, counted you your shit and sat down. Jesus. Yeah. For his yeah. opinion, okay. But I'll tell you what, Tracy. Your uh, dick looks fat in those jeans, though. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, it looks huge. Everybody at home is watching, looking at my dick now. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite things about this show is getting to watch people uh, really finally, you know, whatever you've been through in your life, the fact that you're finally now doing, taking a chance and trying to chase a dream that is so hard to accomplish yet so fun and unorthodox to try. It's uh, so fascinating to me that uh, you're doing it now, and that's great. So if you're into it, work it. hard and have Do fun it. and knock it out. Thank you. I would but kill the poetry side, though. Yeah, don't do the po- if you, if you want to do the poetry side, go over to the poetry shops and just kill them all. Be the star. Be the and funny then, poet. Yeah, be the funny poet. Okay. Yeah. But I, I also, I mean, look, man, for right. you to get on this stage second time yeah. in front of us, yeah, uh, right. that takes great. balls. Totally. And that's half the fucking battle is, exactly. is to Thank have you. the balls to walk on right. stage. And man. then to right. have the balls to do a poem in front of us. I mean, holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's and insane. Truly yeah, with have with the, the, uh, of the uh, Wearing a Whoopi Goldberg shirt, too. I mean, that's <laughs> oh! oh this is Whoopi Goldberg. This is not an higher climate. Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh... I'm wow, guy, I'm embarrassed. I didn't realize. I've been having trouble sleeping. If there's any way, if there's any way you can get me that poem. <laughs> <laughs> I could thank you. Thank you uh, so much. Can Jesus. I plug my podcast? No, you can't no. plug it. <laughs> <laughs> plug your <laughs> podcast? <laughs> they can find they it okay. if they follow you on Twitter. It's at WFascination. That's He's it. on Twitter. WFascination. Tracy, ladies and gentlemen. What? Tracy Greenwood is second time Good on job, stage. Buddy. Is it a poetry podcast? 
poetry based podcast. <laughs> poetry <laughs> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, everybody yeah. listen and find oh. out. You heard him <laughs> sitting down. Now he's cocky. <laughs> yeah, that was cocky. You're real cocky now that you're sitting down, motherfucker. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you want that cocky up here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, this show is fun, Tony. You said it yeah. was gonna be fun. Oh, I mean, we're just getting started. Fucking we're crushing dreams. This is awesome. Let me ask you guys something. Do you remember uh, maybe like a joke or something you did when you very first started stand-up yeah, comedy that maybe you that Lily. maybe you regret and like you're a little embarrassed that you did? Yeah. Can you share it with us? Two I, giant purple dicks walk into a bar. <laughs> True story. No, but the, the, jo- the joke that I hated that I did. That I really, I really fucking hated. Was <laughs> that you did? I did the yeah, joke, yeah. but I hated it. It was so yeah. jokey and it made me sick to my stomach. I go, uh, a guy stood up in the middle of my act. He says, I hate you, son of a bitch. I hope you drop dead. And this was the owner of the club. <laughs> I told you it was terrible. <laughs> But you, you remember those things. I, I, yeah. I mean, there's yeah. jokes that I did five years ago that I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? I don't even like right. your new stuff. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Wow. Wow. <laughs> motherfucker, don't clap so hard, guys. Don't clap so hard. I hope you stick it out, motherfucker. I hope in five years I can remind you about your bullshit poem. <laughs> Hell yeah, baby. This is what I'm talking about. We are playing with fire. Tom or both of you guys. Wait, did did you answer that? Uh, well, well, you know, I here's here's the first joke I ever wrote. Yeah. I used to, I go, my my father used to take me and drive me around the nice neighborhoods, and my father would go, "Look around, son. One of these days if you work hard and stay dedicated, you could cut a yard like this." <laughs> and it was I was 9, all right? I was 9 when I did the joke, and it used to kill. Wow. And then Great I started joke. doing comedy again as an adult, and I was like, let me dust that fucking gem off. Right. Well, you got it double digits, huh? Yeah. Do, you, I thought you said joke you hated. I mean, the first joke I wrote that I actually liked was... No, I did say joke that, yeah. you, hate, joke that you were embarrassed that you did joke, on stage. My father left home when I was in second grade, never cheated on my mother, used to cheat on me. Picked up the other kids after school, took them to the <laughs> zoo, took them to play ball. <laughs> One day he came to me and says, look, I got to love with you. I met another kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's a but great fucking yeah. joke, man. I was an extra. I on think Mencia's doing it. Uh, <laughs> I was an extra on All My Children, not to brag. And I wrote that. Uh, <laughs> but that was uh, one of the first. And the, oh, the other one was, I, I asked this girl out. I says, I guarantee you three screaming orgasms a night. I don't know what you do, but I scream like a bitch. <laughs> uh, but I, I will say that, like, I, I will say that, you know, you look at it like a pro, like, like that, it, the, your delivery now mm-hmm. is just, you could say fucking anything, and it's but so I always, funny, yeah, you know? I, even in second grade, I had a good delivery. Yeah. <laughs> I killed. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, his del- your, your cadence, and you, you learn to kind of get that, and your second time on stage. Of course I know what you mean. I, no. I won three Emmy Awards, for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> there you Fuck go. yeah. Boy, That's real. That's a solid point. <laughs> Number <a> 79. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have to remind you. Three Emmy. <laughs> Just say top 100, okay? <laughs> <laughs> From now on. Tony, <laughs> or I'm out of here. I love I'll it. I'll wait for fucking Don Barris. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that show. All right, here we go. Your second comedian tonight goes by the name of Steve Cotoronio. Steve, the waitress said, Steve. Oh, no, I already like him, though. Steve Cotoronio. So jumped up on the table and got an anarchy, and someone played a beach voice. All right, it's great to be here. Um, fucking sweating already. Uh, I was thinking of uh, joining a gym, and uh, you could tell uh, what that decision wound up being. Uh, I look like the world's biggest eighth grader up here right now. I don't just, I'm not doing it with buttons. I'm not doing it. I got to take a tour of the gym at least, though, which was a, a colossal waste of my time. Uh, she took me into the spinning room with all the cycles. She said, you could go at your own speed. You don't have to feel bad if, like, Louis Armstrong is on the bike next to you. And I thought that was an interesting choice because uh, that's a black jazz musician. Uh, he's, he's not going to be in there. Uh, some people are going a little too hard. Going a little too hard. When you're working out, and you got dick veins running through your whole body. <laughs> Let's skip a day. You know what I'm saying? Like, eat a fucking burrito already. I'm over, I'm over here. I got to peel off my shorts. I got waistband marks just dimpling in. It's like, it's, like a, it's like a mold for macaroni art, pretty much is what it is. You just glue it in, make a little belt. 
Next workout, you peel it off, you have a little snack. It's good. Wow, he stopped talking. That is one angry bear. That is uh, a bear job. He couldn't wait to come out. You ever think of doing poetry? Shit. <laughs> 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 oh, <yeah. laughs> you, you've been doing it a while, haven't you? Yeah. 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 Yeah, he did the right thing. He moved the microphone to the side, which yeah. is cool. you know, he's smart. He's sitting like he's Mark Maron or something. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> no, I'm just sweaty and tired. Make now. yourself comfortable. Are you nervous? Yeah. Really a tired? Nervous. A little nervous, yeah. You're that tired after one more minute? More nervous. Yeah, that, <laughs> that strong minute you did. <laughs> yeah. he's gotta I was take a little break. At, I was fine at 30 seconds. <laughs> 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 and I couldn't catch my breath at 45. <laughs> I, I, I love the, the dick vein shit. The, the, the belt thing as being a fat guy, I'm totally down for that whole idea. You could also have some idea of like maybe having different belt buckles gives you different kind of fat tattoos <laughs> right. on your stomach. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, I got a moon, you know, yeah. or whatever. Awesome. Are you really going to the gym? No, no, no I, right. I, the, I, I didn't join. I would have probably opened with the dick uh, veins. Okay. You know, especially when you got like a minute, fucking hit them, man. Yeah. You, you know, you got, you got, usually, you know, usually a seven minute set. Something like Come that. Come out strong, fucking hit them, and then you got them, and then you can kind of do more. Pre- right. You got a lot of premise, you know. Cool. A lot of, let me tell you about the gym. Well, motherfucker, tell me about it. Sure. You know what I mean? That's so right. Yeah, come out, a, get them on board. When you do a minute and a half, you have more time to set things right. up. <laughs> right. All right. <laughs> right. Right. And then you can run the light 15 Play seconds. You really work. got time. Yeah. But um, at, at a minute and a half, you'd probably need an inhaler. Uh, <laughs> probably the way I'm feeling, right? Get exhausted pretty quickly. But I like the whole thing, guy. The hair, you know, cool. you know, keeping the Jufro, even though you're losing it in the front there. It is. It's going you know? bad, yeah. But you know, that's something you could talk about. You know, you yeah. walk on stage, people see that immediately. Fucking talk about it. Cool. You know. Yeah, if you have curly Jufro and you lose it in the front, is it easier to do like the like push it towards the front cover up? Because it's it like come a forward. Well, the, I don't, the real problem is it. it the top dries faster than the rest of it, so it looks like I have a mullet for like an hour after I get out of the shower. Don't wash so that, your You hair. can do something with that, you know, like the redneck yeah. Drew, yeah. you know, okay. something like that. You right. hate yourself. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Right. <laughs> <Some That's> <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, you know, you look at your appearance, kind of talk about that real quick and fucking go into it. But I think you did great, man. I was, I was impressed. Cool, thank you. Not yeah, impressed w- enough to take you on the road, no, but no, I was no, impressed. I <laughs> no, thank you. Where are you from, Steve? Uh, D.C., mostly. How long have you been in L.A.? Uh, just past five years. Wow. Yeah. Do you hang out here at the store much? Or? Uh, I come by on Mondays. I, uh, I don't spend a whole lot of other time here. I feel kind of weird just like, hey, hey, just hanging out. But that's, that's part of the process. I guess so. You I don't, just got to fucking hang out, man. Yeah. I guess you know? it's... Nobody's, it's like, what, uh, you put it the best, didn't you? You said it was like Fight Club? I did. I, I, I agree it's with like that. You, it's, like, it's like Fight Club. You sit on the porch and people tell you you suck. Yeah. And then they finally invite you in the house. You just got to fucking mm-hmm. hang out. All right. You that... Know? that, that that sounds that sounds fair. I guess it was more of a comfort thing than anything else. I didn't feel well, you comfortable gotta get just out, yeah. around all the but time. But it's hard. Yeah, well, I mean, that's you know. the thing. You have to make yourself comfortable in whatever it is that you do. You got to try to make friends or try to find something or whatever. Find exactly your favorite liquor or pot or whatever the hell it takes <laughs> to yeah. numb the pain, and you get through it. Yeah, and that's I mean, the cool thing about the comedy store. You know, it's open till two a.m., so you can do other spots and then come here right. at the end of the night and hang out. Yeah, get to know people and become a part of this place. Because I mean, you did a great job. I think you did great. Thank yeah. you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, Tom, you, I don't know what he hasn't said a word. Uh, no, but that's, that's you, 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 yeah, you definitely have it. Uh, you definitely have. I mean, it shows the five years. I mean, how long have you been doing stand up? Uh, about four. Right. Okay. About so four. Uh, my question is: is in that uh, gym joke? Do you say that you didn't join, or do you say that you test? You were testing uh, it out. I, what I do you say? I said I was gonna join, and uh, you could tell what the decision wound up being. Yeah, but see, you're right. not you're not fat enough to do that. That's yeah, you're really not. I, I don't see fat when I see you. Not, I, I think okay. like huge that's dick, not, big nipples, terrible so, thing to do. You're not out of shape. <laughs> you're not out of shape enough to do that joke. You know, okay. but it's like somebody doing a fat joke that's not that fat. Like if Tracy had done it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. I thought we were being honest. I thought we were being <laughs> just kidding with you, bud. Um. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think you're, uh, I think you're a little bit on the chubby side, but not enough to really be able to sell the. I think you can tell what that decision was. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it's funnier if you just say that you, the tour. That you tried, right? Yeah. That you took the tour and what you, know. you saw on that tour, yeah. right? Okay. Because everybody's, and everybody that went to a gym, you get the bullshit that tour, tour. You know, yeah. Yeah, even something like you know, I, I, I went to the gym and I started exercising, and I, I would have done more, but I get so out of breath. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like something, yeah. Yeah. Just something that you're in bad condition because you're not fat. Yeah, okay. You're actually kind of cute. Okay. <laughs> All right. Whoops. Okay. Every time. <laughs> that works. Whoops. Took there the I words right out of my mouth. 
But I definitely, like Steve said, I'd start with the dick vein thing. Then you're cooking with fire. You already have momentum going into anything yeah, else. Yeah, you have a minute. Do the yeah, belt thing right after that. I, might, I, might yeah, the belt, the I like the belt idea that you had, too, was the different, <laughs> yeah, you know. It's that cookie cutter shit. Because those are the that two big like, punchlines in the yeah. joke. I didn't really get the Louis Armstrong reference. Because he's dead, too. You know that, right? Yeah, uh, she meant Lance Armstrong. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Well, that, see, now yeah, it's, now I it's could, funnier. I can right. see the parallels between Lance Armstrong Fucking and Louis hilarious. Armstrong. Tweak yeah. some words to make that work better. Well. Yeah, make it a little more obvious that she fucked that up. That's one thing time. lately I've been noticing that, like, in my head, I think I'm already being obvious, but you actually have to dumb it down you a have to. lot. Audiences like, are I, dumb. That's the hardest thing is yeah. dumbing it down because it pisses you off. Like, you should get this. You should be at least on the dumb level that I am because I'm a retard. But no, like, like you most of your explain. audiences are even dumber than yeah. what you think. Like, even would. if you said Louis Armstrong, he's black, yeah. and then you kind of let him yeah. into, yeah. you know, he's black and has both his balls, you know, or... <laughs> You know, something like that. Yeah. So you let the audience know who he is. Sure. You know, because when you said it, I didn't immediately go, oh, okay. yeah. All right. You know what I mean? But I think you did great, man. Be Steve Cotronio. Cotronio. Thanks, man. Thank you yeah. so Good much. Job. He's Good job, on buddy. Twitter. He's on Twitter, at Steve Cotronio, C-O-T-R-O-N-E-O. Good job, um, man. Heck, yeah. This is fun. I didn't have to crush him. That was good. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it's fun to start off with the Tracy Greenwood. Uh, you get that out of the way. The guy that's <laughs> just starting, you know. Yeah. It, it, it's good, Tracy, because you know. I mean, th- the million dollar question. When I said you're new at this, and you go, "This is my second time," that means that's like the complete get out of jail free card. Right. Yeah. Sometimes there has literally been times on this show where I go, "Okay, great. Well, you're just starting out," and they're like, "I've been doing this 13 years," and that's when I'm you're just like, like "You oh, should yeah. kill yourself." <laughs> right. Exactly. You <laughs> where need it's to just quit. like, yeah. Um, so heck yeah. That's a good thing about your set. There's nowhere but to grow. You started. You know what I mean? I mean, it's right. just, You have to get better from there. You're definitely you know I mean? starting from the bottom. How'd the set at the improv go? Well, this is not One great for a podcast. Came. One person came exactly. Perfect. <laughs> That sounds about right. And you gave that one person a ticket. Perfect. Which, which, by the way, you know, for young comics, that's the worst. Thing. Like, when you're a young comic, you want to invite your family, and you want everybody to come see you. That's the fucking worst. The right? bringer show uh, shit. Just yeah, skip just that, guys. Don't you know, do I don't even just... believe in that concept. That's a scam. Fucking... That's a guy trying to make money off you guys. Yeah. Do not fucking Bro. do that bringer show shit. Yeah, never... it's better to do any open mic. We didn't have that bringer show thing when I started out because there weren't even that many people on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'm old. Come on, Tony. <laughs> Get off your high horse. <laughs> um, heck yeah. Did you ever do like an open mic with musicians or anything? Or no, I yeah. didn't do a. I, I was an actor. I was already polished by the oh. time I did stand up. I just didn't have any material. I couldn't believe you had to repeat material. Right. That was the biggest, the hardest thing for me because like uh, coming out of improv. I thought, fuck, these guys are saying the same shit they said last night. Yep. I didn't realize how hard it was to, to tweak it, you know? Absolutely. And f- that was the, the exact same thing. I mean, I was totally amazed. Obviously, not the first night I was here, but the second night I was here when yeah. I saw, saw them again. I'm just like, wait a second. Hey. What's the deal with that? Yeah. Well, one of the first people I saw was Pablo Francisco. Mm-hmm. And he tricked me. And you think there's no way yeah, that like, he, he could he do that. He made all that shit up. Right. So then the next day that's, I go, I got to hear what he says the same day. That's you know, the trick of it. That's yeah. the trick of it. Then I came back to see him, and I'm like, wait a minute, you mm-hmm. motherfucker. And then if you they know? can but make you laugh. But it was still brilliant. Laugh. Right. Yeah, it was still brilliant. Still laughed. Yep. You know? But, I mean, every, and then you realize that every fucking motion, everything that he did was, mm-hmm. was well, worked out somewhere. Yeah. You know? And you add, a, and you notice, if you notice quickly, like a, a real good one, in my opinion, is Al Madrigal. Like, you can watch Al one night, and then the next night you'll see him do the same thing, but it'll be bigger, and right, it'll better. be better. I it's don't mind that, but what I mind is the fake laugh. Oh, Something that. about the fake laugh. Laughing at laugh. yourself, kind of, yeah, yeah. Laughing at yourself as if, like, you cracked yourself up again. Right. Yep. Uh, he really but sometimes, that. sometimes that's it, my it's number real one though, right? Sometimes, well, sometimes it's oh, real, if it's real, that's fine. Yeah, yeah sometimes right. it's... Yeah, yeah, but cool. I usually get a laugh from somebody in the audience. Like, sometimes I'll say... Yeah, I mean, no, I'll say something, I'll say something, and then somebody will react in the audience that'll make me laugh. Right, 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 right. right. You know, like somebody will lose their shit or they'll fucking pull their glasses off. Because or, I, have, you know. I have a lot of fun on stage because I love looking at girls' faces when I say things. That's my favorite right, thing. Right, like, you enjoy what they're saying. I just look, right. look, look, let's see how disappointed she looks now. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I was, like, I was doing, me hard. I was in a show in Knoxville the other night, not to brag. <laughs> and this woman, humble, humble I, was, I was asking them the difference between hillbillies, rednecks, and hicks. I was asking them, and she said she was a hillbilly. And as we went on in the show, and I'd never seen this before, 
She got a standing ovation in the middle of the thing. I'm never gonna. I'm not gonna do it justice. But I said to her, "Are you married?" She says, "Yes." I said, and she says, "I'm here with my brother." I said, "Well, now, now I know what hillbillies are. You know that they're fucking their brothers." Mm -hmm. And they fucking stood up and clapped for her. And I said, "I can't follow you." I can't follow <laughs> the audience member. Yeah, right. yeah, I can't follow Angela, the yeah. hillbilly. <laughs> When natural, uh, when I natural. I, wish I hadn't done that story. <laughs> <laughs> I could only take it back. Dom, I love your face. I could look at your face all best. day. You have a great face. Yeah. It's very comforting it's and big. cute. It's big yeah. and it's sad. <laughs> it's, it's sad. It's sad. And <laughs> <laughs> drug, uh, a lot of steroids. <laughs> a lot of steroids. <laughs> I could never kill like this straight. You must, you must slay pussy, though, because you are a charming guy and you have a charming face. I get chicks that I should never get if I didn't have an act. <laughs> I do. That, God bless that the That is act. the best, exactly. I, I can make them come just doing setups. <laughs> <laughs> Look at these two. You want a piece of this, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right, your next comedian tonight is Kevin Jones. Kevin, uh, where you at, bud? Boy. A lot of, oh, I'm pretty sure these are all new oh, names so oh, far. Oh, 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 wait a second. Oh, I know Kevin. Oh, oh. I do believe Kevin Jones just missed his spot, which means he's blacklisted. blacklisted. <laughs> Very good. Wow. Did you do that? Wow, that was pretty damn good. Hey, Heck by yeah. the way, uh, for all future blacklistings, you have to recreate the, the, the car alarms from the one that's been on since the 80s, like the <laughs> That's the British one. <laughs> That's the British one. <laughs> well, Kevin Jones is blacklisted. He'll never, he's not going to be on the show. Kevin Jones. Which, by the way, that's a horrible way to start your comedy career by signing up for a fucking open mic and not showing up. Yeah, yeah. What the that's fuck? horrible. Exactly. How about Jessica Blankenship? <laughs> this is a dude, I'm going to be pissed. Oh, I see movement. Jessica. I see movement in the audience. Oh, here we go. Oh, here she is, yeah. Jessica Blankenship. Oh shit. Uh, hey. Uh, so I realized that I'm not fit to be a parent. The other day, um, I live in a small camper with a big dog, and usually she's a really good roommate. But the other day, I came home from work and she had shit all over the floor. Um, and instead of cleaning it up, I poured a bottle of water over it, uh, put a towel down, and took it to the park. Um, so I can imagine if I had a kid and she got sick, I'd just pour a bottle of water on her and tell her to run it off. Um, if she got sick in the back seat of the car, I'd, instead of cleaning it up, I'd wait for her to eat it. Um, I'd probably end up asking her to teach me how to lick myself. Um, you know, I just, uh, I really don't think I I should be caring for anything that I should let out into public. How much time do I have? It's kinda, uh, That's it, 56 seconds. Jessica Blankenship. Right. Now, I can really tell you're brand new, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, rule number one, yeah. grab the microphone stand and move it out of the way. Yeah. That's rule fucking number one. You walk on stage, if you're not going to use it, grab it. Move it out of the way. That's rule number one. And then another, another, another dead giveaway was that I noticed that you slowly moved back throughout the entire minute. <laughs> slowly I love, but surely. I love the premise. Going away from the audience. I love yeah. the premise of the joke. It was a really good premise. And there's mm -hmm. beats there. You what just got to find them. What joke? <laughs> you know what I love? That's all very real. Yeah, I know. But it's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's real. That's what's good. Yeah. Keep it real. Uh, the thing I loved is, I would love to see a really professional comedian do that. How much time do I have? Yeah. How much time do I have left? Uh, in, know, in a minute like, set. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm, I'm, I'll take a uh, 30 second yeah. light if you can give me a, <laughs> and then another one at 45. She did an encore. She, she did a blink it at 45. Two second encore. <laughs> <laughs> you definitely just need to start going on stage more. You definitely can tell that your stage presence is very shy. And like, like if, if you sell it, you could probably work with it. You just need to put some tags in it, and you know, lighten up the mood a little, make it a little bit more sillier, less depressing. Do you live, really live in a trailer? Yeah. Because you, you, you seem like you're right out of an Oliver Stone movie or something like that, L like robbing banks. and. Yeah, well, that's what makes you great. I yeah. can tell that you, you've been, uh, uh, you're abused. punished and abused. Right. <laughs> Which, uh, no, that makes for great comics. Yeah. It really does. The more pain you have, the fucking funnier you'll be. 
You know what I mean? And you can tell that you fucking, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's true. And, and, and all that definitely gives you perspective. And uh, so, I mean, you, you got to, if, you, if you're interested in this, then you got to be knocking out open mics because what the open mics do is they just burn away that muscle of the muscle of wh- how you kept looking down at the stage, how you're slowly moving to the back of the stage and all the little fundamentals like moving the mic stand. That's what all those open mics I got, are I got, Personally, I thought it was great that you walked up here with a nice premise. Yeah. You had the right idea. Mm-hmm. You did the, the, the comparison between your the, the baby and and the dog. I, yeah. I, I thought it was you were on the right tracks. So right. Keep doing it. Your cool. material is yeah. not the problem whatsoever. It's it, it, and it, that's, the, that's a great problem to have is for it to just be the onstage yeah. stuff. So you already have the right idea. That's yeah. A, that's yeah. A, Awesome. And you have a lot of shit that seriously dig into the shit that we're not used to. The world that yeah, like, you live in a fucking a septic trailer. tank, yeah, or yeah, or, or yeah. like farting in a in a thing while it's raining with a boyfriend in there, you know, because there's not much you can really do. And yeah, there's all kinds of shit. To yeah, because do I don't yeah. know anybody that that really lives in a trailer park. So just the idea of saying you hear about this trailer park trash, right here, baby. You know what I mean? Like because right. it's. It really is. I mean, I, did you ever meet anybody who lives in Joe? No. Uh, I'm from Texas. I've met several. <laughs> uh, um, I guess it's just, to me, it's it's regular. It's not funny. I, I mean, you know. But that's what it is. Your life, I, your life. You talk about your life. Yeah. You know, and you. T- I mean, when you're with your friends and you're at a party and you're talking about your life and they're laughing, you yeah. got to bring that on to here. Yeah. yeah. You could park your house in a handicap zone right. so your house is wicked retarded. You know, you could go into a lot of different right. areas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I had I to <laughs> unhook the porch the other day to fuck. It's funny. Yeah, yeah. I, ha- I have a, like, a little bit about <laughs> how I have to <laughs> Rob move. Rob a bank in the, <laughs> the getaway house. The getaway house. What did it look like? It was a fucking house. <laughs> how many times have you done stand-up? Have you been working at it or what is um, it? Where less are we than at? ten. Okay. Uh, maybe like maybe once a week. There you go. I mean, have you ever had sex at your house where you have a donut on your house? You like there's. there's I've, a I've got a little bit working about the house about how, uh, like, I have to move. But every this three this days once this once a week shit's got to stop. Right. You yeah. can't do it once you, a week. Well, <laughs> I have a job that like actually pays fi- my you bills. You have to right? figure it out. What do you do? If you, if Stand you, up's an everyday fucking thing. You yeah. got to yeah. figure it out. Hey, easy. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> if, you, if you fuck Thank a black you. guy, you have to put the emergency brake on. <laughs> That's just racist. All right. Uh, that is just racist. Yikes. Because he's going to pound you, and you don't want to <laughs> roll down a hill. <laughs> oh. Jessica Blankenship, everybody. Thanks, Thank Jessica. Thank you. How fun. Got to dumb down the jokes. Great premise. Interesting stage presence that can easily be fixed by uh, doing it more often. Now, have you, you've, never, uh, you've never known anybody that lived in a trailer, Dom? No. The, so the only trailer you've ever been in a, is a movie trailer, one could say. Uh, right? I've actually thought about it's buying really one of those. It's really a joke. It's true. It's wheels. true. <laughs> I've, I've thought about buying one of those silver trailers because I'm never home. Why, why, why don't you just live by the beach? Yeah, I live on in yes, Malibu. Airstream. Airstream. Yeah. 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 Let's have keep you? it. What? Have you met anybody living no. in the trailer? Oh, wow. One oh, of the shit. lights one of the just patriot. fell off the... <laughs> the patriot oh, is shit. falling apart. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, it seems like some of your upgrades are cheap, Brian. Well, I'm <laughs> sorry. It's, I have uh, a lot I do every week. I, well, I think the upper maybe, body is uh, starting to look pretty sweet. Maybe you should call me sweet. when the show gets a little bigger. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you can afford a better costume. Wow, you do a great Patriot impression. I think uh, Amazon Prime's doing a perfect job. Helping yeah. Amazon out there. Prime. All that <laughs> stuff <laughs> from the computer to the front door in less than two days. Yep. Uh, your next comedian, another, I believe, new name. Put your hands together for Brian Vestal. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, so my first date was also my first concert when I was 14, and it was Boys to Men with Montel Jordan opening. That is true, and my mom said, because I asked the girl before I asked my mom, can I go on the date? My mom said, yes, but I'm coming with you. So, true story, my mom bought a seat, sat right behind us, and read a People magazine until the show started. And then when the show starts, everyone stands up, my mom says as loud as she possibly can to everybody around, why is everybody standing up? We paid for these seats. We should be sitting in them. And proceeds to get everybody within arm's length (laughs) to try to sit down. 
That was the first and only date I had with a girl named Rachel who had mall bangs. And that's it. Okay. I'm waiting for the Montel Jordan or the Boys to Men thing to come back into play. Yeah. Okay. Um, and was the audience all black? Uh, no, it was pretty much like whoever was into hip hop at that time. So I guess a bunch of 13 and 14 year olds. How old were you? I was 14. So you were literally a boy becoming a man and your mom wa- boys, boys to men. Yeah, yeah. But you're yeah. with your mom, so you're really not fulfilling the prophecy after all. No, not not at that time. One could say that when you're watching Montel Jordan, you were thinking, this is not how we do it. No, no. <laughs> but he did say the party's here in Sacramento and everyone lost their face. Just laughing yeah. hysterically because there's a, not a party in Sacramento. <laughs> <laughs> how long How long have you been doing it? Uh, this is my second time. Ever yeah. on stage. Yeah. I do a lot of sketch Holy and improv. Yeah, you're, a, you're an actor or something. Yeah. Not, yeah. Uh, not stand-up, so I'm trying that this year. Well, what's amazing is that uh, it's really yeah, interesting how blatantly great your stage presence is because even Dom, when and I agreed with him, when you first came up, the way that you moved the mic stand and started talking, he leaned in and said, this one's a pro, and you, I mean, not like you know, he does. He wasn't. He had, he hadn't heard the fact I didn't that you professional comedian, right? No, no, no. But, but I, I, <laughs> I can tell that you've been on stage many times, right? But you have that whole Jay Moore thing going. Oh, you know, right, a little right, a little, Jay a little bit. No, don't be rude. You're like I'm not trying to be yeah. rude. Wait, wait, Jay Moore when he's successful or now? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, that was funny. Yeah. Why don't That's you say you that when do. you walked on stage? Don't do that Did fucking story. Do jokes like that. Yeah, that was yeah I, I literally haven't written anything yet, so I was like, I'll just do I something know. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Very comfortable. Yeah, let I mean, me do yeah. something I remember. Let me go back 20 fucking years yeah. and bring up a story about my mom. That's what you remembered? What about uh, what you did yesterday? Where did you go? Where did you eat? Where did you get that bullshit T-shirt? You know what I mean? <laughs> but, uh, I mean this is whole... one of the few white hands that doesn't have like uh, oh, right. pit stains here, so I was like, if I get hot, I won't look like I don't like know how to do laundry again. It's the it's idea, so the idea of sitting people down. I think uh, that's very like everyone has been there, where where yeah. you're, you're sitting at like a, a boxing match, a UFC or some, and people are standing up. You're just like sitting there, like, come on, do I have to stand up? So yeah. there is something there you could probably play with, or you could just do something else. Well, and, but, and the uh, embarrassment of having your mom on a yeah. date, you know, yeah. and your mom's going, sit yeah. down, everybody, like, mom, I'm trying to finger bang here. Can you give me a <laughs> right? I like yeah. the idea of your mom scoring, you know. Your mom scored, scored some, some guy. She goes out with one of the security guys, and you don't get fucked. Your girlfriend leaves you, but your mom gets laid. Yeah. Now yeah. we're talking. That's yeah. right. That's no. fucking, Make your that's mom. No, that's, actually, that's, right. no, that's a great – that's fucking funny because so you go out. I look back, and mom's making out with one of the – one, yeah. one of the, one of the <laughs> right. singers. And whatever, yeah. whatever song it is, The End of the Road or whatever right. the fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just – But you're really said, pretty, you don't have any, so that's good. They said if you don't have material, just like tell a story that you know, so – just trying that, to I, think that, I think that's for people. I yeah. think you're a little bit, you, just off the, I know it's saying uh, uh, probably too much, but I think just off that, how you responded to that Jay Moore thing alone, I think you're funnier than that story. Okay. Uh, so I, I agree with, I agree with Unless Steve. Unless you punch it up. Right, and you could always yeah. punch it up, and it's, but that's a, that's a story. I don't, I, I mean. You're fucking lazy, that's what you are. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's in my iPad, no, or iPhone notes to do comedy, so that's the first thing to do. Are you going to continue to do it? Or? Yeah, yeah, I, I plan on coming as often as possible, at least every Monday night here and then other places. Awesome. Wherever I can get up. Do you smoke weed? I, oh man, okay. I stopped today because I have. <laughs> you stopped today? I stopped today because I have a job interview. I in stopped like today because I'm out. You have I need to get yeah. it all out. So I picked the day to stop smoking weed to stand next to this guy. And I could, if I was so high right now, I could just go for like 20 minutes on I have the best your weed. Pa- you really fucked up and picked a bad day. I know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just, you're talking out of your crotch. I just. It's but I, 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 weird. Like the, I like the whole fucking white boy, you know. Thank you. Thing uh, you got going on too. I, I mean, it's a you know the sh- whatever those are called and khakis. No, the shoes. <laughs> oh, Sperry Topsiders. Yeah, yeah, those yes. fucking gay. Things. I don't own uh, a boat. I just, I just wear. No, them. but you have a good look. You know, you Thank have a good you. look. And you, you have good stage presence. Do you live in the valley or like Dawson's Creek or where do you live? <laughs> <laughs> Up on uh, One Tree Hill. Place. There no. you go, Brian Vestal. Thanks, guys. Good name. Second time yeah. on stage. So we've had. Three out of the four people, uh, second time, second time. Man, we've only been through four and people. And less than ten people. 
Jeez. One less than ten. So uh, popping a lot of somewhat cherries. Well, it's not really popping the cherry. This is like that second time when it's still nice and tight, but yeah. none of the blood. Yeah. Anyway, uh, your, oh, I know this guy. Very funny oh, one-liner sweet. comedian. Put your hands together for the one and only Gabriel Killian. But a guy breaks down and flies little girl out. Anyway, he's got fucking jokes right yeah. here. Rapid Let's see if he sells his voice loud and strong. Yeah, talk, you motherfucker. Uh, I was watching some porn online, and uh, much to my surprise, I came across a 48-minute video featuring my uh, girlfriend getting gangbanged by six black guys and three Puerto Ricans. Jesus. I don't know, man, but let me tell you this. I would have been so fucking pissed, but thank God it was just a movie. <laughs> Girls don't believe me anymore when I tell them I'm a light-skinned black guy. I'm going to have to start saying light-skinned Dominican. They don't believe me anymore either, uh, either when I say uh, I'm black from the waist down, but it's true. It's the price I paid for saving children from burning school when I was 19. <laughs> I used to think that uh, urban legends were really cool basketball players who lived in the hood. <laughs> Nailed it, 58 seconds. Um, that, was, uh, <laughs> that was funny. Fuck yeah. Your voice was stronger this time, but you still, you, you're you very quiet and shy on stage. You're wearing a hood and a hat. Yeah, but I, you know what? I kind of like it. Do you? Yeah, I kind of like the, the, the kind of, you know, whisper into the thing and you got Make that raspy voice thing. You know, you're hiding behind the hat. You know, Mitch Hedberg, I, you know, I used to work with Mitch and uh, bragging. And, uh, <laughs> and, and I asked Mitch one time why he covered his face and he said he had stage fright. And Mitch said, that's why I grow my hair out, so that I could put it in front of my face, because I'm afraid of being on stage. And that just kind of was the allure of him as well. So, I, I mean, I kind of like the kind of quiet fucking... You have to, you have to listen. You want to hear a joke? Yeah. But you know what I mean? It makes people listen. It puts them on the edge of their seat. Uh, it's, a, it's a great psychological trick. Um, I didn't know you were light-skinned black works. the whole time I knew you. I'm not. Oh. No, he's not. <laughs> it's Armenian. Uh... Do you have any jokes about being Armenian? <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, all right. <laughs> Do you have any jokes about being Armenian? No. no. Oh, come on. That's hilarious. Right. Nothing, huh? Nothing. Well, I, uh, There's got to be a one, but I never told it. It's, it's just uh, short. Uh, I'm, uh, As opposed to the other ones? <laughs> <laughs> I'm half broken, half Armenian. I, never, I wrote it, but I never said it. Half before. broken? Half broke and half Armenian. Hmm. Right. Yeah, don't, like don't do that. Armenian. Yeah, it's yeah, I never told you. Was that Iron Patriot? It sounded like a full Armenian to me. <laughs> 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 I think you did good, man. You, you do a lot? Uh, today was my first time on stage in over a month. But, uh, yeah. How come you don't do other places? You signed up. You said earlier, you mentioned to me before the show that you signed up for the last 17 weeks in a row and you didn't get on. Yeah. Now well, you're, I, I you, go other places. Yeah. Open mics and shit, yeah. You're saying you haven't done this show for a month? No, just, uh, before this, I went up at the, uh, at the potluck downstairs. That was my first time in over a month. You really get nervous on stage. You are so shy. What if I kiss you on stage? Do it. Yeah. Do it. All right. I'm going to kiss you on the lips. Do it. Oh, on shit. With a little oh, tongue. Oh, wow. A little tongue. Yeah. Pull out that dick. Let's touch tips. All right. Doc on it. Uh, this is a fir kill Tony first. Oh. Wow. There you go. Now, what, what makes you nervous on stage? Like, because I, I could tell by your hands, you're like going like this and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and the like, way that he, the way that he breathes. Like, who cares is about these stupid faces looking at you? <laughs> who gives a shit? It's weird. I don't feel nervous on the inside, but uh, my body reacts that way sometimes. You get like jittery, Just, especially because it's been a while since uh, I've been up on stage. Yeah. Do you ever look at audience members in their eyes when you're on stage? Uh, Does that part freak you out a little bit? I don't usually, because uh, most of the times when I, when I go downstairs, the lights hit you in the eyes. But yeah, other places. What do I, you look at? What I are did, you looking at when you're? I did on the stage? flappers main room, and I was looking at people. Yeah. Right in their eyes. Yeah. Flappers main room. Who's booking that? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a club? I admit, I barely look at people's faces. I I daze through them, or I daze around them. But it looks like I'm looking at them, but I really barely ever look at people. I look right at them. I look yeah. deep into their eyes, I mean. and I command. And because it wasn't always that way. When I very first started, it was sort of like um, um, whoever the fuck. Jessica Blankenship, who was looking straight down a lot. 
I was a lot like that. I had a bad habit of looking straight down. And since I started in the original room, I had a bad habit of looking out that window on the right side. Yeah. So I'd be looking down and then out the window. Almost not at all did I look at the audience. And I'm talking my first couple weeks. But one thing that I started doing immediately that I'm now super glad that I started doing because now I can get a feel and a vibe in the middle of a set or the beginning of a set or the end of a set for the tone, how they're feeling, what they want. Because I'm literally looking so deep into their soul, I sort of know what they're thinking at the time. So if you wanted to, you could really do that, and I'm sure that would help with your stage fright is to make a point to really make eye contact with people because looking at the ground and looking at the lights and looking at the ceiling, that's cute and all, but why not make it worth well, something? If I go up a couple of days in a row, I, the, the nervousness is completely gone. But I don't, I don't, I mean, if, if you keep writing and you keep writing funny one-liners the way you do, mm -hmm. it, it won't matter. Just fucking yeah. boom, boom, Because you'll be getting boom, laughs boom, and you'll be you like, know? oh shit, I'm getting laughs. Right, and once you get that, you know, put your best joke first. That way yeah. you get that laugh out of the gate and then you feel more confident. If you get silence out of the gate, you're like, fuck, now what? You've absolutely you know? got to be going on stage every night. I've heard your Definitely. jokes before. I just brought you up as the one-liner guy. It still works. Yeah, the fire joke's smart, man. It's a really good joke. Yeah. Yeah, the, when you, that's the price you pay. Oh, yeah. you yeah. got a knack for writing those one-liners, so get in the game, man. Stop pussyfooting around and do it because your, your jokes, are way, too, you, uh, your jokes yeah. are way too funny for you to just be doing once a month or whatever the fuck. Uh, you Don's get alarm's into going it. off. He needs to take his pill. <laughs> <laughs> but is it that bedtime? Is that, is that your, <laughs> is that your <laughs> sleepy <laughs> time alarm? <laughs> sleepy time. <laughs> <laughs> it's Xanax time. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck I think yeah. you did great, man. I was impressed. Yeah, yeah awesome job as job. always. That's yeah. Gabe Killian. He's on Twitter at Gabriel Killian. That's G A B R I E L K I L L I A N. Killian. You know, I disagree with the uh, thing about him having to look at people. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I see agree. guys that are, I see Stephen Wright and guys mm -hmm. that don't look and they look down. Mitch. If it's funny, well, Mitch. Uh, He's not looking down much anymore, but. Well, Unless they I, I, buried him out. I was saying that literally, I, I said I use it to know no, no, that's sometimes where to go, but I'm talk talking about his crap. stage fright. But he, if he's a joke monster, right. Right. That's what I, was get, I think he can get away with it. You know, mm -hmm. just one joke after another. You're more personality, but he has no personality, so. No, I'm kidding. And what they're saying is if you guys would get together, you'd be one good comedian. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Steve. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I do wish I could write jokes. Yeah. Uh, if I could only somehow find a way to make a living out of doing um, that. No, but I agree with, with, with Mr. Herrera here. Like, no, yeah, you know. totally. I was telling you about the stage fright. It's something that I know helped me. It was just real. I, would, I, I remember a few weeks in, I was literally just staring at people, yeah, which yeah. is a bad extreme, but I was right. trying to break the habit no, of looking down. Choice, and, right. right. So, fuck, yeah. We're really getting to the roots of shit tonight. Let's, let's burn through some of these Let me guys. Explain yeah, to we're you flying through what it. funny is. <laughs> Your next comedian is Mike Roberts. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. Mike Robertson. This yeah, is Robinson. I know. Robertson. Simulation right. theory, guys. Yes, all right, all right. Hey, I'm just going to get straight to it. I've been, di I've been divorced 32 times. And nobody knows but me. And my wife doesn't know. And it's all in my head. And I walk past her in the living room. I look at her on the couch and be like, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> Smile in her face, she doesn't know. I had to realize one thing first, that she's crazy and I'm slime. The reason I'm slime is because she treats me like slime. <laughs> All right, I wasn't going to cry for real. <laughs> so the reason she treats me like slime, <laughs> the reason she treats me... Oh, you guys making me laugh at myself. All right. <clears throat> so let me go back to it again. I've been divorced 32 times. <laughs> yes. Straight to the bear. You know what it tells me that you were laughing? Your thoughts were funnier than the actual words you yep. were saying. Yep. In, your, in, your, in your head, you're like, oh, this is going to fucking kill. Whatever you were thinking, yeah. you should have told us. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That, was, that was a simple case of just not saying what you were thinking. What do you work? You're a manager at Target or something? <laughs> what do well, you actually, do for work? No, actually, I work at uh, Xerox. Xerox so yeah. copy machine. That's yeah. still around? So you nailed it. Yeah, big yeah, corporate. Much, yeah. Right. yeah, big corporate dude. Yeah, I can Put see the, the slacks, you know, yeah, the, tuck to the yeah. shirt, the whole thing. 
just got off. It's just you're black. I didn't think you had a job, but uh, <laughs> I wanted a few. I wanted <laughs> a few. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what a soul yeah. survivor. Um, how long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, I'm Tell the very truth. recent. Uh, I used to do it back in the day in the 90s, but I'm just not getting back to it in the last six months, five six, months. So how, long, how often have you been going up the last six months? Uh, I've been coming out a lot, but not really getting a lot of time um, on stage. Oh, yeah. Once a month? Um, once a week? Yeah, about that. About once a month. Once a month, twice right. a month. That's okay. what's hard, man. Is yeah. it's got to. I mean, you got to try to get on stage as much as possible. I know. I've been trying like. I would recommend Ha Ha Cafe and places that charge you five dollars to get on stage because that. at least it's guaranteed. You're as much as that sucks, but you, that's why you have to pay it because you if if it's not convenient for you to to wait in line and not get up and stuff like that, you have to pay the five dollars just so you can get the mic time and yeah, figure you your shit out. I always tell comics too, and 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 you know a lot of comics go, I don't want to host. <laughs> that's the best spot. If you can go to an open mic and host it, that's the best spot. Because that means you're getting on stage that night several times as opposed to sitting in the back, not getting on stage and waiting for your stage time. Sounds I don't good. know if it's the it's best advice. spot. How much do you hate your wife? I'm sorry, were you talking um, to them? Oh, go ahead. How much do you hate your wife? It seems um, like a lot. I'm getting the vibe of a lot. There's a percentage of it, but I don't really hate her. How long have you been married for? 19 years. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's, that's, your, right. that's, your, Painful. that's your opening line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've been married 19 years, painful, and then get into it. Thank How's it going? Do you have kids? I have three kids, yep. Wow. wow. Three kids. How oh, old yeah, are you they? have a wealth of material to talk about. Um, they are in ninth grade, 11th grade, and freshman in college. Holy oh, shit. You need to just talk about that shit nonstop, yeah. man. And the fact that you work at Xerox. There's got to be funny stuff yeah. in there, right? Yeah, Is that what you said, true. Xerox? Yep, yep. <laughs> Trying to get people to stop emailing? Copycat? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Copycat. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking camera sucks. Oh good, my dude. god, that's so this great. This is funny. I don't know if this is funny. I've been married for 18 years and I love my wife, but more than that, I'd like to fucking kill her. <laughs> or I hate her. Just going from one. Whoa. Right, just flipping it. Telling yeah. the truth. Because it does, there is something about what you were saying about the 32 divorces and this and that. Basically, what you were saying was that <laughs> you don't like your wife. That, that's <laughs> every, yeah. Yeah. every time I walk there's by, a right. Every, but there's you have the balls. <laughs> you don't have the balls to do it. Every time right. I walk by, I picture her being hung. I picture her in an electric chair. Right. You know, just every. I don't year. know about hung. She's black. No, that's no. just racist. This was one of the most racist episodes she of the show. She might not be black. Yeah. Um, oh, she might not be black. Is she, she white? Might not be black. No, she's black. Oh. <laughs> I was say if she's white, that's a whole other fucking yeah. shit you could talk about. How she improved your credit. You know, I mean, fucking something. You know? Iron Petriot, what do you uh, think about this? I wanted to be a homeowner. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, uh, I couldn't see him from uh, the front, but I thought it was funny he worked for Xerox because he's an exact copy of uh, Brian Moses. Oh. Uh, that's I just saw the back of him. From inside here. joke. Very story. inside reference. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so inside, not a single Good for you, man. Line. You're doing it. Uh, <laughs> you're doing it. <laughs> Um, All right, good heck job. Heck yeah, Mike. There you All go. Right, thanks, guys. He's on Twitter, believe it or not. His Twitter handle is at King Mike Boogie. You got that handle, huh? Your King Mike Boogie. Wow. You got it. That's awesome. Heck yeah. Mike Robertson, everybody. Hell yeah, man. He prints out his tweets. Keep doing <laughs> I it. I was thinking about the same thing. I was like, is yeah. he mail his tweets? <laughs> I, thought, I, I thought the only uh, comedian that copies was Mencia. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, <laughs> that's not true. There's a lot of fucking joke thieves out there. And that's one. That's a big problem, by the way. Like, I don't know if there's a lot. There is. There really is. A lot? I think there is. I found a guy the other day that was stealing my shit. And get out of here! And, <laughs> wow! And, and if you know my wow. shit, wow! No and if you know, if, if, <laughs> it's true. And if you know my shit, it's very like hard to like just come up with that type shit. You know, it's very like creepy and horrible. Yeah, I just said my shit was horrible. There you whatever. go. That's crazy. Did you talk to the guy? Yeah, I called him out. Did you really? What yeah. did he say? Good for you. What he did he say? Yeah, deny, right? deny, 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 Who deny. Was it? I don't even remember anymore. I don't, want to, I don't even want to bring him. Sorry. His name's Brandon Jeffries, everybody. <laughs> Not the guy that steals. <laughs> your next yeah, comedian. <laughs> your next comedian. His name Brandon Jeffries. <laughs> there he is. Lots of new people on this yeah, episode. I love it. So uh, I'm 29 years old, and I work two shitty dead-end minimum wage jobs, you know, because I dropped out of college. So, like, I really painted myself into a corner there, you know. And uh, 
One of the problems about working these kinds of jobs is you work with a lot of other people who are fucking like just gave up on life just like me, you know? But I try to keep it pretty positive. I don't complain a lot, you know? But every now and again, I'll have like a small gripe, you know? And somebody will be like, have to correct me. They'll be like, you know, Brandon, you should be glad you didn't at least have a job, you know? Just be glad you have a job. A lot of people unemployed out there. And like, I fucking hate that mentality, dude. It's like this person's aggressively settling for life so hard that they try to bring you down to their level. That's like the equivalent of saying, like, I don't like fucking rat shit on my Cheetos, but at least have an afternoon snack, you know? Or saying, like, my wife's trying to, my wife's slowly trying to poison me with cyanide in one of my dinners, but at least I have a warm, at least I have a warm hole at night and somebody to, and like a warm meal at night and somebody to love me. Uh, I kind of fucked that one up. That's all I got. Thanks. Uh, I counted nine you knows. <laughs> you got You can't do it. You can't say you know. Oh, you know. You know. You, I, heard, I counted nine. Yeah, uh, there, that w- that w- became such a big problem that it like gave me heart, heart palpitations. Like yeah. it was that bad. Uh, That's all I could focus on. Yeah, it was on. pretty freaky. You know? I thought I had it hammered out, man. It's a lot different when you actually get up here. Of course. You know. <laughs> How long have you been you doing know. stand-up? Uh, I've just been doing this like you know. open mic in Riverside <laughs> for a know. while, and it's you just know. like music poetry, and then they let me you go know. up. So that's all the only one I've really done so far for you about know. a year or so. So this is your... First time not in an open mic first in Riverside. First at a comedy exclusive open mic, and yeah, first time not in Riverside. So you know, great, exactly. <laughs> so you know, it's like you know, in uh, Riverside you know. is basically like saying and or the because that's how they talk right. out there, right? Maybe, maybe and I just don't notice know. because I'm in Riverside. You know, you you got me. I, I you know, I, think it's I just got nervous. that one. I think it's just a nervous <laughs> thing, man. I like, yeah. But I liked your energy on stage. Like yeah, you had yeah, good energy, and you, you went up there and you were like into it. Uh, it's just the you knows were driving me fucking nuts. Yeah, honestly, yeah. the second I heard the fourth or fifth one, I lost. I, I wasn't even paying attention. When you were well, about twenty seconds in, just I to let liked you know. It. I- I think you should be. I think you should be the you know comedian. <laughs> oh, buddy, I'm seeing t-shirts, you know, t-shirts, <laughs> cool, cool lots, yeah, uh, no, caps, koozies. You know. uh, what's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word VCR? VCR, video, whatever oh, it stands okay, for. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Um, you know, Brandon, nobody's ever going to make it to what you're even talking about until you get rid of your, you know, right, habit. Right. I noticed like everybody's kind of tuned the fuck well, out. The, the, about totally. the six, you know, people right. laughed, you know, right. cause they were like, holy shit, how many times going to say Right. This? And then they also laughed because they didn't know. And, and what uh, you were talking yeah. about. So like uh, at that point, you had set something up, and, and we sort of knew that you had attempted one, and then you said, you know. And people were like, no, we don't. Uh, no, we don't know, man. So it sort of made it funny because they're like, we don't know. Um, well, what are you Mexican, black? No, white? I'm Great black, question. Half white. I'm an Oreo. I'm like most people think I'm like Mexican or something. They come up to me speaking Spanish and like. No. Oh, talk about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, First thing you yeah. get on stage, talk about what you look like. And I'd also talk about how you sound white as fuck. Like right. I mean, yeah. that's, that is super right. white. Yeah. <laughs> Riverside's not next to like the ocean. <laughs> not at all. But you sound like a surfer. You skate? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. What is the deal with like riding boards like that that makes you talk super white? Yeah. Like That's weird. No matter how you know, black or Mexican, if they ride a board of any kind, it's uh, it's very like, hey, what's up, man? You know? I just like to hear both like somebody else that is like him talking to each other. You know? No, you know. <laughs> right. You know. No, you yeah. know. No, yeah, I know. You Do know. you know? No, you yeah, know. I know. Yeah. If you didn't know, now you know. Dude, both of us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right, so the you know is just way too much to get past to, like even to what I'm totally. talking about. Totally. No, no idea what you, you uh, Seriously, yeah. I had no idea. I was just focusing on how many times you said you know. Yeah. It I was, was at it, nine. When was you listen of... back, when you download this later and oh, listen on. I don't know if I can. No, 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 no. Seriously, you need to because it was really crazy. How many times he said, you know? All right, all right. Fucking give him a break. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, Hell yes. Uh, Here's awesome. the thing. I thought, th- I thought, uh, I like the idea of working two minimum wage jobs, because the fact is that takes a lot of character. Because you know, so you, you are Mexican. I listen to your podcast. That worked too. There you go. A lot. You know what I oh. like about you? <laughs> <laughs> Everything. <laughs> And no, it's but I think there's something really uh, intrinsically funny about somebody who works two jobs because it's admirable because you could make more money not working. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, and the, and the fact and the fact that Don't you went to co- you went to college, didn't want to work hard, 
to get through school. Right, and in the long run, I'm working. But in the, yeah, in the long run, you're working two jobs. Yeah. I, I agree with. And you have right. a great perspective. It's totally true. In the very beginning, I almost forgot about this. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> this guy's that. gonna <laughs> fucking this guy's owning it right now because <laughs> you were in it. You're like, I have two minimum wage jobs. I'm a lazy fuck. Whatever you said, like you were truly in yeah. it. You were owning we it. We expected you to go off and on then, that. Right. Yeah, and then it went a whole different direction. Yeah, yeah. So whole, just know. <laughs> a whole what? A whole unfunny direction. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, but you get you you got something definitely. Yeah. All right. Cool. So don't quit. Good job, man. Uh, just yeah, like that focus goes, on your notes. Know. Seriously, that's don't all you have qu- to do. Don't quit goes for fucking everybody. Right. That's, period. Right. Even you, Tracy. Don't quit. Yeah. yeah. Just I hate to say it to you, but don't quit. And go. Brandon, that's got to be just like a you know it sort of seems like a theme of tonight is you know the things that these open mics are great for is eliminating shit habits right from the get. So you're you know you don't need to come to the comedy store. You can take care of that at your Riverside open mic. Uh, whatever you, know. you write, whatever you do, if you if you get it down from to eight to five to three, you knows per minute, great. Fucking eight. If you can get it down to eight, right. But you gotta start now. Yeah. Brandon Jeffries, everybody. He's not on Twitter. Hey, and by the way, Iron Pe- Iron Petra, you can't step outside if you want to like cool off for like three minutes because you're allowed to move and do whatever you want. You want. You could sit down. You, you could fly. Oh, 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 that's nice. I'm dying over here. Yeah. Yeah. Take I off. Step outside. We're almost done. Now, so you... Heck yeah. We we're actually gonna move on to the part where we get our uh, two regulars on stage every week. We have two amazing regulars that have been writing a new minute of material. You know? Every single episode, yeah. if you uh, know what I mean. Um, and uh, it's always fun. It's always exciting. And we're going to do it again right now. Your first comedian tonight, uh, your regular. Um, you know her from the Kill Tony podcast. She, just as uh, like the other one, will be in La Jolla March 1st for Kill Tony on the road. Put your hands together for Kimberly Congdon, everybody. Here if she you is. know what I mean. So I was reading up on nature versus nurture today, which I thought was pretty interesting. A bunch of moms had opinions. And one lady said, no child is born evil. And then I got to thinking, like, I've never seen, like, a bunch of evil babies. Like, have you ever seen an evil baby gang where they started their own gang? Like, somewhere in America, is there a basement full of little tiny newborn babies? And there's, like, a leader baby, and he's like, all right. First rule of baby club, we don't talk about baby club because we can't fucking talk yet. If your shit's green, you're on that side. That means you're sucking titties, brown poop, you're on formula. Don't mess with the other kids. Can't fuck around and catch chicken pox. If your mom was in labor for more than eight hours and she was in a lot of pain, you're going to fucking say dada first. Punish that bitch. Uh... (laughs) And since your dad got to hear dad at first, you're going to wait till he changes your diaper and then you're going to piss in his mouth. Okay. Thanks. Was the end of that you're going to piss in his mouth? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Um, all right. That was a weird one. Mm-hmm. But, you know. Well, it's definitely Baby an... Baby gangs. But you have, to, you, have to, is it, is it, you have to come up with a new minute every time you come? Yeah. Good for you. You have great stage presence. Oh, thank you. Really good cadence, good confidence. Thank you. The joke was, huh? Eh, yeah, less. that was all right. You went for it. No, but she committed. <laughs> yeah. She committed to the joke, and you had the ideas yeah. written out. It was good. Thank you. Baby Fight Club. Baby gang. No, wait. Why would they be in a gang again? Because uh, I was reading on Nature versus Nurture and like how they say like some kids are just born evil. Right. And then I thought of a baby gang and like sagging your diaper. Because they were born evil. So. Sagging their diaper. Yeah. There was a whole bunch more poli- er, like taking shots, but polio shots. It was oh. stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff that you left out of the minute probably was so stupid. What's the, what's the difference between brown and green shit? Uh, formula and titties. Oh, okay. What's green? It didn't matter. I made it up. Oh. Formula. <laughs> formula. Brown is titties. Titty milk. Brown titty titties. milk. Chocolate titty milk. You know, the oh, color. you're used to well, black I was gonna do, you Maybe know the know evil babies have a 40 of milk? Yeah, well, you know how bloods and crips are like blue and red? I was going to do like the color of your poop determine which gang you were in. Or something, you know. <laughs> wow. Thick I thought a lot about babies that. today. Yeah, <laughs> I used to do that joke. <laughs> um, <laughs> you have great stage presence. Thank you. How long, how long have you Thank been doing it? Uh, like seven or eight months. Really? Yeah. 
Tell yep. me. She I started think... on this show. Yep. Really? Her first Picked time was one. on she's, stage here. She dropped out of good. college to stay with us. And, good for uh, you. Thank you. She dropped it's, out of the uh, University of Florida. Did you really? I did, last my last year. And what are you? You're kind, of, you're, you're kind of brown. Uh, my mom's Puerto Rican. My dad's Irish, Native American. Oh, shit. You're an alcoholic. Native American. Yeah. <laughs> Native American. <laughs> fuck this shit. You could go to open up a casino. <laughs> <laughs> you could be making real money quickly. Heck yeah. Baby Fight Club. Um, that's an interesting one. It definitely needs to be beaded out uh, or eliminated or something. You know, we <laughs> okay. got to get somewhere with it. Yeah. That's what uh, open mics are for. You come up and you just try every right. single baby purpose. example you can come up with yeah. until you find the ones that work. Yeah. Okay. Um, Kimberly, great job. Kimberly Congdon, everybody. Kimberly. There she goes. Yeah. Working it out, getting through it. I'd like to do an open mic. <laughs> you want to do a minute? Yeah. All right. You want to? Just a minute. Yeah. Of open Let's mic. get through our last comedian and All then right. you can do a minute. Okay. The other regular on the sh- the other regular on this show. <laughs> Put your hands together for Sarah Weinshank, everybody. Here she is. I'm an adult, 26 year old female with a glow in the tar- glow in the dark pink sparkly retainer, guys. Yeah. 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 On my retainer, there's a peace sign sticker with rainbow petals. What makes me sad about this? is that I don't get to eat tape by the foot when I'm wearing this shit, okay? I got Play-Doh. I have some type of developmental issue. I was looking at this Play-Doh, and I realized in that moment that Play-Doh is a weird thing. You can't, it, have you ever seen dried out Play-Doh? Nothing's worse than dried out Play-Doh, guys. You open the, you go to open the container expecting to have some fun, and what do you get? Disappointment. A rock. Yeah, rubble, you know, rubble. Looks like scones are just ground up inside of this (laughs) Play-Doh container. Uh, Also, the scent of Play-Doh. Have you ever smelled Play-Doh? Yeah, Yeah, you love it because there's chemicals in there that make us addicted to it, you know what I mean? You see it and you just want to open it. And when you open it and all those colors are smashed the fuck together and it's just rust colored, you're disappointed. There's nothing worse than dried out Play-Doh. <laughs> Sarah makes a Sarah's uh, voice is taking uh, things like that, like normal things, and stressing out over them. Yeah, so no, I this, love the Play-Doh. This idea. one's Play-Doh, and yeah. the scones reference was, yeah, it's a it's a callback <laughs> from another minute that oh, killed nice. where she just talks about scones. Um, yeah, get more descriptive about you know whatever the, know. it's inside that play-doh. Like, right. just go, then it's just it right up while, fucking play-doh. It took a while we'll to get to the play-doh. What does it look like? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and that's what I wanted to talk about. There's hair in play-doh. It starts right. getting pubic hair. It yeah, starts it needs to get shaved. Yeah. yeah, it's in that weird little tube, so you can't. I don't know what what is that like. It's, it's almost like, like a, a, a Pringles can for midgets or something. Yeah. It's like a <laughs> tiny, thin little. Or how the play the white play doh used to turn all black from you know when you're a kid and your hands are dirty and you're playing with the other stuck ones. Stuck at the bottom of your stuck. Your at, yeah, I mean yeah. that's. I had other shit I was gonna say about it, like how the lids don't match the color inside. I don't know if I like said that. Like motherfucker. You're yeah. like I wanted fucking green and just like all everything is like that same clay color. Dama, what are your thoughts on play doh? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a press conference. Well, I think Play-Doh <laughs> <laughs> should be used for good, not for evil. I like the way that you can actually pick up newsprint on it, right? Oh, yeah. uh, so you're silly putty. Silly putty. Oh, silly putty. Play-Doh, silly putty. Yeah, that was after this. I got four fucking Play-Doh. months left to live. What do I do? <laughs> yeah. But I like the way you play like the little cute girl and the, you know, I have the retainer with the... Yeah, that was, that was weird for me to say <coughs> because I feel like that's not my normal voice. Like I have a retainer, so then do you really I have a retainer? I do. I have to take it out to suck dick, nothing like that. No, but I don't want to talk about dicks. Like I want to. No, I, I want you to. Yeah. <laughs> Start say. talking about penis. <laughs> yeah. No, I prefer to talk <laughs> about Play-Doh. No, but I, no, but I thought it was funny. It was hard because you went with the. You know, it was hard for me to eat the. Uh, the tape by the foot. Gum. The tape by the foot. That's funny. Yeah. That's the only twelve inches I put in my mouth. 
That's fine. See? Oh, thank you for your approval. (laughs) I think it would be the biggest left turn ever, knowing you as well as I know you, seeing all the minutes that you've put together put together if you, all of a sudden at some point you just make a huge left turn and start talking about dicks in your yeah. mouth <laughs> I, I, I'm yeah. for this go but from seashells to whatever to yeah. this to Glitter, that play-doh to scones all, dicks in my mouth everybody yeah. Yeah. all us guys put play-doh on our dick when we're kids too to mold it to look at it and stuff like that and sh- share all it to us our all us guys do that Did buddy don't put really? me in the <laughs> There wasn't enough Play-Doh, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Costco, bitch. <laughs> I thought I thought you did great, though. You're you're really funny. There you go, you. Sarah Wineshank. Good knocking job, it out. Sarah. Good job, Sarah. Did it again. We did it again. Did you want to do a minute? Yeah, here's my intro. Okay, here's Dom I- Dom Irera. Wait, no wait. There's a guy who's been auditioning okay. here since the comedy store opened. Mm-hmm. He's very close to passing. <laughs> this is his make a wish. friend of the club. Uh huh. Razor. Okay. Razor. Ladies and gentlemen, your final comedian of the night has been performing here, auditioning here, since it was the op- since the club opened in 1972. He's very close to being passed. Uh, put your hands together for Razor. Everybody. Razor! Thank you. What's up, what's, what's up with turtles? I mean, you know, uh, they're like this, and I'm thinking, pick up the pace. Uh, uh, you ever, you ever notice? You ever on a bus and and, and you and you you mean to pull your stop and you forget it and then you pull it two blocks later and you have to walk back? Don't you hate that? Uh, anyway, uh, you know it's it's amazing because I, I was at my my uh, my cousin's christening and I was really killing and my my aunt said that I should be a comedian and that's why I'm here and I thank you for staying. Uh, and I, I, I appreciate you all looking at me. Isn't it amazing how people climb up Mount Everest when it's already been done? I'm thinking, what the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Uh, Uh, Razor, uh, razor. everybody. (laughs) Couple. Wow. Couple things. You guys want to critique me? Yeah, (laughs) couple things, Razor. Uh, You know, uh, anybody that looks like this, not going to make it. Yeah, I'll tell you, Razor. I know you. It. I know you've been doing this a while, and that uh, you're almost past here. But uh, I mean, you have the stage presence of a guy that's number seventy nine in the world in oh. stand up comedy. Oh. <laughs> you, uh, I, I, <laughs> Chihuahua. But the uh, <laughs> oh, the, uh, <laughs> the uh, guys, we got to wrap up this the episode. Turtle, the turtle premise. Dom Irera has an amazing podcast. He's Dom Irera on Twitter. I just did it, and you just did it. Yeah, we both just did it, so you're going to want to listen to that. What's it called again? What? Live at the Laugh Factory. Live at the Laugh Factory. Dom Irera, live from Laugh Factory. You can find that on iTunes. Steve Trevino is Mr. Steve yes. Trevino on Twitter, and you got something huge coming out. I have my, uh, my second one-hour special coming Woo-hoo! out February 16th. Yeah. Uh, Showtime? It's going to be on Nouveau TV. Very nice. Nobody's ever heard of it. I saw your last one. It was fucking great. Yeah, I'm yeah. really proud of this one. So hopefully people tune in and watch it. Is that it. the one you shot at uh, Corpus Christi? Yeah, I shot it back. The uh, arena. Near, yeah, four, we had 4,000 awesome. people in there. It was a beautiful So there show. you go. We're making magic happen. Thank you guys so much for being on the Dumb show. Dom guys. Iron Patriot is at Patriot. PDC on Twitter. That's it, at Pete EC on Twitter. Uh, stick around. The Ding Dong Show is next. Uh, See you in La Jolla, March 1st and 2nd. That's right, in Traverse City, February 14th and 15th. I'm going to be there at the Traverse City Film Festival. And I got Omaha Island. and Dallas, Texas coming up. There you go. Denver and Columbus, Ohio. Look us, all up on, look us all up on Twitter. Find out where we're playing near you. At Dom Thanks, everybody. You know. <laughs>